Hey, let's go to Great America. No, we're gonna die. No, you idiot. We're not gonna die. Prove it. Are you for real right now? Yes. Come on, how bad can it be? This is Great America. It is known for two primary rides, Gold Striker and Veilblazer. Let's look at the physics behind them to see whether or not you're going to die. One way you can die on a roller coaster is if the roller coaster crashes. But can this happen on the Gold Striker? Well, we can look at two main points, the drop on the Gold Striker and the turn right after the drop. Specifically, the velocity of the drop and the acceleration at the turn. What happened? Both of these have to be precise enough to not derail the roller coaster. What I mean by that is that if the roller coaster is going too fast at either the drop or the turn, there could be a big problem. The roller coaster has to travel at a certain acceleration to smoothly go through this turn. This acceleration is called the centripetal acceleration, which is basically the acceleration an object needs to stay in circular motion, kind of like the moon orbiting Earth. If the moon doesn't meet the centripetal acceleration, it'll leave orbit. To calculate the acceleration the roller coaster needs to go at, we have to find the speed the coaster needs to have right at the end of the drop, going into the turn. To solve this, we have to use something called conservation of energy. We use the principle of conservation of energy to help us find the total mechanical energy of the system, which is just kinetic energy plus potential energy. And along the way, we also found the maximum velocity. We knew that at the bottom of the roller coaster, the potential energy would be zero and the kinetic energy would be at its maximum and the kinetic energy would be equal to the total mechanical energy. We used 1 half mv squared equals mgh and isolated for v to get root 2gh. And once we did that, we got our max velocity to be 24.806 meters per second. Using the speed, we can find the centripetal acceleration using v squared over r, where r is the radius of the turn. We found that the acceleration at the turn was 40.67 meters per second squared. We also measured the velocity of the drop, and we found it to be 53.7 miles per hour, which is just 24 meters per second. So this is really close to what we calculated, which means you probably won't crash on the Gold Striker. G-forces is essentially the acceleration your body goes through while on the roller coaster. 1g is equivalent to the acceleration due to gravity while on Earth, which is 9.8 meters per second. While on the roller coaster, however, your body will experience different amounts of g-forces, which can cause you to feel those thrills and excitement or possibly terror during the ride. The lowest recorded g-force on Gold Striker of 0.4g is about 3.92 meters per second. The highest recorded g-force of 4.15 g on the Gold Striker is about 40.67 meters per second. Depending on the velocity of the coaster, the centripetal force will vary, meaning so will the g-forces. This increase in g-forces makes your body feel heavier, compressing your spine, making your muscles work harder to counteract the increased acceleration. Sensory experience refers to how your body and brain reacts to physical sensations like movement, pressure, and balance. On roller coasters, the g-force is constantly changing, meaning the pressure on the rider is also changing. When g-force is greater, such as during turns or when the roller coaster is going upwards, you feel heavier because of the increased pressure from g-force that pushes you into the seat or safety bar. The pressure causes muscles to tense up to maintain stability, which bit better stabilizes your body to resist inertia, which is why after some intense rides, your muscles feel strained, especially the neck and back muscles, which support your head and body respectively. Your heart and lungs are also under pressure, so it may feel harder to breathe because of the g-force on your lungs, resulting in the feeling of being out of breath after the ride. The g-force also has an effect on your heart's ability to pump blood towards your head. With the decreased blood circulation upwards to your head, you could feel lightheaded and dizzy as well as blurry vision since there is lower blood flow to your eyes. The reason people pass out on roller coasters during high g-forces is because of the lack of oxygen in your head, and when you experience high g-forces, 
your blood is pulled towards your lower body, and if you don't tense your muscles in your lower body, such as legs, cores, and glutes, to prevent all the blood from flowing downwards, then you could pass out due to the oxygen deficiency under high G-force environments. Every single roller coaster passes through this area called the brake run before it enters the train station. Gold Striker uses friction brakes and Railblazer uses magnetic brakes. Gold Striker experiences a deceleration of about 10 meters per second squared over a period of one and a half seconds. The loaded train car weighs roughly 6,600 kilograms, and by Newton's second law of motion, F equals ma, that tells us that the brakes are exerting a force of about 66,000 newtons. Now, if we look at the equation for impulse, impulse is equal to the force times the change in time, we see that the impulse of this brake run is about 99,000. For context, that's about the same amount of impulse needed to stop four adult rhinos charging at full speed. Meanwhile, Railblazer experiences about 12.74 meters per second squared deceleration over a period of one second and has a loaded weight of 18,500 kilograms. Adjusting the values for Railblazer, that means the brakes exert a force of 235,690 newtons. And if we convert that to impulse, we see that that's about enough impulse to stop 10 charging rhinos, which is a lot of rhinos. But remember that Railblazer's brakes use magnetic force to slow the train. So how do these brakes work? Well, there are permanent magnets attached to the coaster, but in the braking zone, there are electromagnets. Now the operator can change the strength of the magnets in the braking zone by adjusting the amount of current that goes to them. Now, when the train enters the braking zone, the magnets interact, and the magnetic fields of these magnets are in opposing directions. That means that there's a magnetic force acting opposite the direction of the train's travel. This causes the force to slow the train down. Wait, so will I die? Dog, you have a better chance of getting kidnapped and murdered than die on one of these roller coasters. Wait, what did you say? <laughs>